Verse number 1 through 12. <laughs> Today is Communion Sunday, uh, so we're going to certainly uh, try and hasten through our, our time of preaching so we can participate in this important sacrament. But it is also uh, a weekend of great kind of celebration, depending on who you are or what you'd like to do. Uh, many folk know that Halloween was on Friday, and uh, the Giants won the World Series on Wednesday. <laughs> so, you know, it gave everybody a chance to dress up in orange and black, whether you like the Giants. Even the Yankees? No, people? No? Alright, it was all time. But it was indeed Halloween. And, and many of us know, man, Halloween has all these different kinds of connotations. It gives everybody an opportunity to dress up in costumes and uh, their, 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 their uh, alter ego comes out. Pray God, folks get a, a free pass just being a whole other person for it. A day and nobody talks bad about it, amen? And then yesterday, um, in the liturgical calendar of the church, you may not know this, but yesterday, November 1st, is always called All Saints Day. And All Saints Day in the church's calendar uh, reminds us of the intergenerational, dare I say, the cosmic union of the church and all of those people who have followed Jesus and were positioned uh, given the trial, given the, the, the sacred uh, assignment to die for their faith, mm. All Saints Day remembers uh, the sacrifice and we celebrate the unity of joining with our relatives uh, from all parts of the world who have died in faith uh, on behalf of uh, Christian uh, principles and and beliefs and ideas, and I'm convinced, amen, that uh, we should always remember the martyrs of the faith, the saints, those who have gone before us. Uh, I tell it all the time, even to the young people who may not necessarily believe in Christian faith, that all of us uh, are, are being uh, uh, required to be willing to put our lives on the line for Christian faith, but not all of us will be asked to. But the question is, are you willing to, amen? Are you willing to die for, amen, this truth and this faith in Christ? And then today, uh, November 2nd, is usually called All Souls Day. Yeah. And uh, All Souls Day is this kind of emphasis. It started very early on in the church with this focus, amen. There was a teaching about purgatory, many people that come out of the Catholic tradition. You may be familiar with this idea that some people died and they were not fully ready to enter into uh, eternal fellowship with God. So they spent a little time in the in-between. And, and this uh, a day was used as a day of prayer and intercession for those who were still in process. Trying to be right, amen. <laughs> to make it into eternal fellowship with God. And we are Protestant, you know, kind of come out of the, the Protestant tradition. So we don't necessarily uh, subscribe to uh, that uh, doctrine, if you will. But I still love the idea uh, that uh, all souls need some folk praying on their behalf. Uh, because how many of you know if you keep it real, you ain't nothing but an in process soul. Amen. <laughs> in process. The, the certification has not stamped you yet. Praise God. Give me never high five telling you in process. Amen. In process. So, so Halloween costumes, all saints, folks who die for the faith, and all souls, those who are in process. It is a very powerful uh, 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 trilogy of days, if you will. And uh, we're going to continue in the Jesus I Never Knew series. With that as our backdrop, prayerfully uh, allow us to uh, speak on this topic, as you may have seen, uh, uh, how Jesus keeps it 100. Amen. And I was trying to figure out how to spell 100, but I figured God would know what we did. Matthew chapter number 23, verse number uh, 1. We're reading from the message version, and the scripture says, Now Jesus turned to address his disciples. Along with the crowd. Let's say that again. Jesus turned to address his disciples along with the crowd that had gathered with them. 
the religious scholars and Pharisees are competent teachers in God's law. You won't go wrong in following their teachings on Moses, but be careful about following them. They talk a good line, but they don't live it. They don't take it into their hearts and live it out in their behavior. It's all spit and polished veneer. Instead of giving you God's law as food and drink by which you can banquet on God, oh, that mercy with an image. They package it in bundles of rules, loading you down like pack animals. They seem to take pleasure in watching you stagger under these loads and wouldn't think of lifting a finger to help. Their lives are perpetual fashion shows, embroidered prayer shawls one day, and flowery prayers the next. They love to sit at the head table at church dinners. Good thing we don't have church dinners. Basking in the most prominent positions, preening in the radiance of public flattery, receiving honorary degrees, and getting called doctor, doc, and reverend. Don't let people do that to you. Put you on a pedestal like that. You all have one single teacher, and you are all Classmates. Don't set people up as experts over your life, letting them tell you what to do. Save that authority for God. Let Him tell you what to do. No one else should carry the title of Father. You have only one Father, and He's in heaven. And don't let people maneuver you into taking charge of them. There is only one life leader for you and them, Christ. Don't you want to do you want to stand out? Then stand down. Be a servant. If you puff yourself up, you'll get the wind knocked out of you. But if you're content to simply be yourself, your life will count for plenty. Oh, the word of God, for us the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. Thank you, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God that is been read for us the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts. Send your anointing. That means preaching and teaching easy. Let us support me even the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, keep it 100. Amen. Come on, say 100. Amen. Don't keep it 100. No, don't say that. Keep it 100. Amen. Tell your other neighbor, lose your costume. Lose your costume. Now, uh, it is important, amen, just to appreciate where I'm trying to go with this passage. To understand what keeping 100 means, amen. Uh, if you Google this and the Urban Dictionary pops up, you'll see that it is defined as to keep yourself real and true. To be honest and stick to the way you are, no matter what anyone else thinks. To tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. A.K.A. keep it real. <laughs> to be honest with yourself as well as others. Keep it 100. Now, it is super important, I think, to try to set a couple of guide marks in this passage because one of the great weaknesses of modern, postmodern society is that all of us have become radically individualized. So we read everything in Scripture with a radically individualized lens as if Jesus is talking directly to you. And he's talking directly to me. When in reality, he's not talking to either one of us individually. Right. <clears throat> that whenever you see the word you, Y-O-U, in scripture, the overwhelming majority of the time, particularly in the New Testament, it refers not to the you in singular, but the you in plural. Right. Teach, teacher. It is this idea that the body of Christ, the church, has a communal responsibility to read scripture, yes, yes. hear scripture, interpret scripture, and follow scripture. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Somebody say the collective we. Amen. It, it is not the individual you, even though many of us are very comfortable with the world being individually about you. That's why Father Jesus is always an interruption of our ways of being. When we take a look at this kind of communal you or collective we as we read scripture, 
I think it helps you and I to maybe even understand what the words of Scripture are saying even more profoundly. Particularly as we engage in this text, Jesus, Scripture says, talks to his disciples along with the crowd. Yeah. He talks to his disciples along with the crowd. Jesus has a model of engagement with people that is multi-layered, but consistently authentic. And what I love about Jesus keeping it 100, Jesus keeping it real, is that Jesus in different places and spaces always gives people the right dosage of realness. He gives them enough of it to help them to understand that they're sick and he can make them well. But he doesn't give them so much of it that they get sick and can't ever feel like they get anywhere. Yeah. Keeping it 100, when I look at the life of Jesus, is a model of engagement that when we are trying to rediscover Jesus is critical. Why? Because many people have reduced Jesus to a couple of nice feelings, emotions, and sayings. And have lost the idea that Jesus was the master of engaging different kinds of people, even all at the same time. Jesus modeled a certain kind of engagement in his life where you see uh, that he has his disciples, but even in his disciples, he has an inner circle. He has 12 followers, disciples that hang out with him, follow him around, homeless a band or pack of folk. But even in his disciples, he has three, Peter, James, and John, who get to see things that the other disciples, for whatever reason, don't get a chance to experience. Peter, James, and John get to go up on a mountain and hang out with Jesus. And they get to see him transfigured. While well, everybody else, I don't know, cleaning up the 5,000 Loaves of bread and fish. I don't know what they had to do. Jesus, when he's getting ready to be betrayed, the scripture says that he goes a little bit further and many of them uh, stay behind. Some of them fall asleep, but the few that stayed awake got to see the struggle of Jesus. Jesus has his inner circle. He has his 12. Then you have another instance where Jesus had 70 folk that he sent out two by two. And he empowered them and he said, listen, you go out and you speak and preach and share this message with people. And some folk not going to accept you. That's all right. Just wipe the dust off your feet and keep on. Amen. Keep it 100. You ain't got to get all bogged down with the haters. Somebody say amen. amen. That's something you all to just say, baby. Don't get bogged down with the haters because haters go to hate. Yeah. I wish I had an honest church in here today. How many liars going to lie? Amen. Amen. But the truth will always prevail. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus has these concentric circles of relationship. He had the 500, then he had the crowds. And every moment you find Jesus, you do not seem. I'll say seem because, you know, uh, how can we speak but in, you know, a certain level of humility. It does not seem that Jesus is ever not being who he's been created to be. And I want to argue that this consistency in all these places, him being uniquely created as the Son of God, kenosis, taking on human flesh, the Savior of all creation, the Lamb slain before the foundations of the world, that Jesus' actions and even the intensity of his engagement the variated, the variated nature of his speech, depending on who he talked to, always allowed people to see the truth of who he is. But then he juxtaposes this often, particularly in the book of Matthew, with the Pharisees. Folk that seem to always have this kind of schizophrenic, dual split personality. And the way that Jesus is often summing, summarizing this kind of engagement of the Pharisees up, he calls it the yeast of the Pharisees. Now that's not a compliment, just in case 
you're curious. Jesus says, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. The yeast of the Pharisees was a constant warning that Jesus gave to everyone who would listen. And it was largely this association with hypocrisy. This understanding that there were a group of religious folk in many respects in their eyes throughout this who thought they were better than Jesus. You got to be some kind of somebody <laughs> to think that you are better than Jesus. I don't know. Let's say you don't even believe in Jesus. I think if you ask, the fact that Jesus named continues to reverberate throughout history helps me to think that maybe you and Jesus may not be on the same level. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Could it be that regardless of your full belief in Jesus, there's something about him that requires your sincere reflection and attention, but yet the Pharisees have this thing working inside of them that disallowed them the opportunity Infected with 
with stuff. Mm. I mean, the elections are a perfect opportunity because everybody get up and you know these politicians is lying. I mean, you know they're lying. I mean, it is to the point now where you just try to figure out which one lies the least. <laughs> you close your eyes and eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Hey, man, I just hope this thing don't hit me on the toe. <laughs> Super 
super superhero costumes. <laughs> Halloween is only one day out of the year. But how many of us walk around in costumes all the time? Come on. Garments. Thank you, say it, preacher. Man. They do. Yeah. Truly give a description of who you are. Man. Say it, preacher. Make you feel like your feet ain't on the ground. <laughs> 
Right. Like you, you float through the sky. You walk yeah. on water. There's only one that did that. Right. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it was not you. Yes. <laughs> right. Amen. It wasn't you, man. Sis, I'm sorry. You great. You talented. You gifted. You are the bomb. But stay grounded. Yes. Yeah. Because if people put you on a pedestal, guess who gets to take you down? Right. That's good. That's right. Either you or them. Yeah. They take you very seriously. Because the person that believes they are standing. Scripture says, be careful lest you fall. Right. I mean, there's a whole lot of vices percolating on the inside of every one of us. Right. Don't say, oh, they hate on me. No, you're just going to disqualify yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you get on a pedestal too high. I mean, just yeah. think about this. Just think about this. People work on these long, big old ladders, scale buildings, go building these big old bridges. Professional people who do this work all the time. Brother Bill and I went to the Giants game, the Giants Dodgers game, when we beat them. Praise God. Richmond, 
And my prayer for the church is that we will not be people who are running away from hurt and pain and problems. Even with our own, because I got a low boat load full of them. But I'm carrying them right on with me. Because God's grace is sufficient for us. Keep it 100 means that you are authentically who God's created you to be in every single place and space of your life. Because you are using the power of God's Spirit to keep 